What is up guys, you got Not The Worst here, bringing another Black Desert online video, and today we're taking a look at the patch notes for August 11th, and in case you didn't know, uh, we have Corsair Awakening, of course, which is number one on our table of contents. Let's go ahead and head on in and see what we got going on. Uh, of course, we have the Corsair along with her buddies, the Slippery Scallywags, these uh, otters that uh, hop out on some of your skills, shooting like water cannon things. She's got her harpoon water gun sword gun blade thing, the pet traka uh now available in the game so you can pick that up and go ahead and get your corsair awakening on dropping anchors on some fools uh we've got summer season early graduation i know everybody was looking forward to this we saw this announced in the global lab notes uh, just last weekend um so this is now available running from now of course till the end of the season so you can get that done uh, and go ahead and graduate if you want to, get your conversion, you'll get a gift box full of memories with some extra stuff in there, your boss gear, exchange coupon, some Valks and whatnot along in that. And then, of course, the big one is you're going to get your reward uh, through exchanging one of the items you get with that pen, Kaposha neck for most people that are graduating here. So what I need you all to do is go ahead, get your pen Kaposha necklace, take your Ted Ogre, Ted Layton, YOLO swing that thing for pen, and then min list it. I'm looking to buy a pen neck for like 60 bill. That'd be great. Uh, if not, I'll pay a little more. I think I already saw them selling for 64 this, this morning, just within a few hours. So I think 60 billion is pretty achievable. If I have to pay more, I will, but uh, I'd like to get the like lowest possible pen neck. So go ahead and swing those bad boys. I'm waiting to purchase yours. Um, other than that, uh, they've got the dev note just kind of on the graduation. So early graduation system was added on August 11th for our adventurers that have been enjoying the 2021 summer season. Unlike previous seasons, the early graduation quest has been made easier. However, characters will not be able to graduate while still in possession of the item Fugar's timepiece. This failsafe was put into place so that adventurers will not mistakenly graduate without using their timepiece. If you do not wish to use the timepiece, then you can delete the item in order to graduate. We hope everyone will continue to have a great adventure after graduating from the server. Listen, there's no reason to not use this timepiece. It costs copies the skill points and combat XP of your season character over to any other character that's under level 25. So if you're level 61 or 62, you can straight up just swap, the, not even swap, you straight up copy that over to it. So definitely don't delete it, just use it. Even if it's a class you don't think you're going to be interested in playing, why not just have another level 61, 62 with, you know, 17, 1800 skill points, whatever you were grinding up to on the season servers. As far as actually graduating, the requirements for it, early graduation, are just completing the season quests. And if you have the Black Spirit Pass, you also have to accept uh, those ones as well. So you can use those. They did make adjustments to the items that you get for the last quest there that you swap out for a daily box. Uh, 25 of those or 15 of those, I forget what the total number is. Uh, but you'll now be able to use those on any character, not just a season character. So don't worry about having to wait if you don't want to for that. Fun memories of a Scallywag Cannon event has started. Um, so this is the Slippery Scallywags brought the Scallywag Cannon to Velia. You use this uh, item and you get Mermaid's Frozen Will. It's an item drop rate buff of 30%. A little extra to your grind there. We've got Slippery Scallywig Shanty event. This is similar to our Shining Knight event thing that we see. If you talk to these guys that spawn randomly while you're out grinding on a Corsair, you'll get combat XP 100% and skill 300%. And if it's any other character uh, class, you'll get just the skill XP 300% as well. So a little bonus going on there. See so a Polish Forest on that one. We have the Plundered Gifts event. Welcome to welcome the awakening of their beloved captain Corsair. The Slippery Scallywigs have plundered some gifts for our adventurers. You're going to get daily loot scroll, um, some other items along with that, and then uh, it's also got login rewards that go up to like Shikatu box, as they mentioned right in there. Uh, we have the Sprouting New Buds of Life with Small Deeds event started. It's got an energy buff for your housing um, items you can put in there to get a little little extra juice going on. And then we also have same Twitch drops turned back on. They've got some daily cron stones along with some other things, as usual, with the drop events on there. For character updates and classes, um, we just see a lot of the fixes that we had on Global Labs introduced over to the uh, main servers. I'm going to be honest, I forgot that these weren't already on the live servers after covering them in the Global Lab notes the past few weeks. So I didn't really notice it, but uh, DK got some fixes on her skills, Seed of Catastrophe in Core, and the four level weren't getting the right amount of hits. It was actually like that for a very long time. Uh, enforcement as well wasn't getting the correct number of hits. Those have been fixed. Some uh, glitchy things with Nocturne were fixed as well. Um, just kind of regular things that I honestly thought were adjusted. And despite the fact that I played Dark Knight, I completely forgot that they didn't fix these issues for like, I don't know, two months now. But they're here. Uh, you The dying of the monkey on your shy bandana thing um, is now more customizable. I... 
Dude, between this and like dropping anchors and summoning otters, some I just I forget I forget why I play this game. Uh, Sage had an issue fixed where the character would sometimes freeze when consecutively using the skill while stamina is low. And then we have Corsair. Aside from the Awakening, of course, being released, that means uh, the Awakening skills that get carried over into her succession are brought over. So we got Captain's Orders and Ocean's Allure uh, for it. We've got Ford Guard with some pretty good damage there on the open fire. And then we've got an unprotected uh, float. Uh, both of these do have evasion rate um, uh, reductions on the opponents. So, yeah, this class is doing pretty well. For uh, accuracy, at least uh, at a glance from overall most classes, Sage is pretty ridiculous as is DK. Uh, we've also got the Robum's Enlightenment skill enhancements. These were added. We saw these on the Global Labs just last week. So we now have a, finally a full kit for Succession. And of course, Awakening is released with a full kit around with it. So it'll be a little bit of a tweaking what's nice there. They increase the MP recovery on different skills here. Ocean Melancholy in the Prime versions as well and uh, Overflow. Uh, also, and Smooth Salen now has MP recovery, just a little bit there, plus 10 on hits, which is kind of nice considering her, her MP sustain's been a little lackluster. For item updates, uh, they do note that how they are changing costumes so that uh, shoes will be offered separately. A lot of people were upset about the Outlaws of Margoria outfit set. They did retroactively fix that. The shoes are now separate. It'll be a helmet, armor, and shoes. If you already purchased it, you'll find that the shoes are removed off that character, but in your mail, they went ahead and sent you the pair of shoes separately so you can mix and match those if you wanted to. They also updated these are the event items from the Termian, um, the Termian event that's going on. They did all say that they were going to disappear at the end of the event, which is August 18th. However, uh, they decided to go ahead and leave those in there. That way you're not rushed to just grind out uh, whatever you had buffs wise in the last couple of days if you didn't have time uh, to do it. And then for the central market prices, we knew this was coming up. I mentioned this in the last Global Lab video and I think in the patch notes as well. Uh, for this, the silver value of a um, costume off the marketplace went from 335 million silver to 470 million silver. So they are a bit more expensive now, but the number of Cronstones you get also increased. It's not directly proportional, but it's close ish. Um, so you used to get 330 for 335 million silver, and now you're going to get 420 for 470,000 silver. This was done in inflation. You can like it, hate it, whatever, but it is it, what it is, and it's not going back. So they do that every once in a while to keep place. Costumes weren't always 335 million. It's increased. I think the last time was a year ago as well, but I, I could be wrong on that. Uh, really, really nice content updates, quality of life. Once again here, Nader's banned when exchanging a plus 100 or more enhancement chance. The time that it takes to actually swap it has been changed from 10 minutes to 30 seconds. Thank you very much for that. That This was extremely irritating when you're in the middle of an enhancing session and you just need to move stuff around, especially if you're like me and you just fail literally everything. So you have tons of hundred stacks that need to get shuffled around. So, yeah, that's definitely a thing. Number of days in which a new adventurer can enter the Olvia service changed from 30 days to 60 days. And the requirements for it uh, are now adventurers logging in within 30 days of creating their family for new and returning adventurers have not logged into the game for 30 days or 720 hours, nor use the central market on the web as well. There's now a spectator mode in Vaz Cradle and Ataraxian uh, that allows you to spectate a party member after you die. And note that a Dark Rift event will begin on August 18th, 2021. Um, I'm trying to think, why do you note that ahead of time? Should you start saving your Dark Rifts because it's going to be better? Or is it going to be where there's just new uh, new monsters that are spawning in the Dark Rift like we've seen in events in the past? Not entirely sure which route to go with that. Since they're telling us ahead of time, I'm leaning towards maybe hold on to your Dark Rifts. But we could be wrong there. Um, we had some issue fixes in your uh, quests. But the big one here is that they did add the swap quest for the pen accessory. So if you've been working on the pen accessory quest line, you're not entirely sure what you want to go with. Tom Gradiering, Narc, Ring of Crescent Guardian. There is a quest available where you can actually switch it um, later on. You'll get the Dancing Moonlight Blackstone and then the Tet, so you can push that two pen uh, from there. That's what that item does. Then they uh, talk about, we got a couple devs notes on Conquest War, so I'll go ahead and read through the uh, dev note there. I know not too many people that uh, are in it follow the Conquest War, so if not, there's timestamps. You can skip over to the next section if you don't want to go through this one. But here we go. Second week of the Conquest War preseason will begin soon. After the update from last week, we are sure that each adventurer have their own perspective. Each adventurers have their own perspective and thoughts on the new victors, rewards, Medea Valencia territory, Conquest War, APDP limitations, and other changes. We'd like to thank everyone that participated in the wars and have given us valuable feedback. The Conquest War preseason is our first step in trying to improve and add new ideas to create an even better Conquest War. Therefore, the changes made during the preseason are not final. They can go through further iterations of changes and improvements following your feedback and results. This makes your opinions extremely valuable to us. We'll be going through each and every one of your suggestions during this time to go in the best direction possible. During last week's Conquest War, 
uh, times, many of the territories had their respective wars, big and small. However, with the introduction of the victory rewards, there were still some guilds that decided to plant forts to create a difficult scenario, while other territories were intentionally liberated. Following these results, we are continuing to monitor the situation and trying to come up with ways to modify the standard for the losers and liberation rewards as quickly as possible, especially the losers and liberation rewards. They were designed to alleviate some of the burden for guilds that really tried their hardest in the war. We'll do what we can with the rewards and uh, are used for their original intent. Furthermore, we've received numerous suggestions and feedback we received from our NAEU adventurers about the spirit of battle system. Spirit of battle is for underdogs that can gain a burst of strength or to be used strategically to win the war. However, the stronger guilds were able to use the system by filling the gauge to their advantage. This will also be revised so that the system will work to match its original intent. We'll do our best to handle all these issues with an update soon. Finally, we'd like to apologize for the issue where the Medea Valencia Conquest War was delayed. We're working hard to create a more stable gameplay environment. We'll continue to strive to make Conquest War an honorable fight, not just during this preseason, but in the future as well. We hope all our adventurers will continue to show their love and support for this content. And then we have some of the updates there. Uh, revive cooldown decreased by six seconds per recovery center built is now after that's going to be three seconds per recovery built and they note on this currently in conquest war resurrection takes 24 seconds if all six recovery centers are up therefore even if a guild goes in for a big fight and wipes out the opponents there were times when they just uh, couldn't get enough time to damage their base therefore we've decided to offset this by adjusting the time decreased by each recovery center from six uh, down to three um, and then they do start to talk about what they want to do with Spirit of Battle. Increase level 1 Node Wars Fort DP by 100%. Uh, the War Barricade DP by 20%. Moving on from there, background change. We're not too concerned with that. UI tweaks. A couple of, couple of noticeable, notable things there. Change the design to be in the style of a messenger that our adventurers are more familiar with. And also enhance its functions. Not only did we adjust it to save records in a message box instead of an in-game chat, but we also made improvements to visibility. Accordingly, you can now more conveniently manage your friends list. There's also sound effects for obtaining different amounts of silver uh, that was tweaked as well. And then what was actually uh, mentionable here, guild missions tab window is going to display the remaining time to reaccept a guild mission, which is nice. You can also get your Tuvala gear purchasable in clumps instead of having to click it individually. Also pretty nice. And then we have a search equipment and inventory function for when you're viewing your other character's inventory. So if you're on that end game screen and you want to click on the character and check their inventory, you can actually search through it now in case you have some mule characters where you're just storing extra stuff that's kind of in the way regularly. Uh, then we have just system web update changes. So let's jump on over to the Pearl Shop for this week and check out what we got going on. First up, of course, we have a new outfit for Corsair, the Desperado Premium set, which we've seen in all of the previews for The Awakening. Um, it looks nice. It, it's nice, colorful. It's great. I just don't, the hat just seems so out of place on this outfit, but maybe that's just me. It's a little weird. We've got our camouflage sets available for it as well. Striker has this uh, Burning Soul outfit available that is up and uh, uh, pun fully intended. Uh, this thing's pretty fire. Get it? Because it's, it's burning. Burning Soul. The outfit's fire because it's, it's good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then, of course, we've got a pack to go along with it for 5,100 pearls, which will give you a one-day Book of Old Moon, five item drop scrolls, and then you choose from your pick of another round of costumes there. The Corsair Awakening pack uh, is also available for 3,500 uh, pearls. It has that new premium outfit for Corsair, two plus eight inventory ex uh, expansion coupons, and then bonus Mermaid's Frozen Will Box, uh, Book of Trainings, Combat and Skill, Sealed Book of Combat, 300% scrolls, three of those guys, and a 20% discount coupon to go with it. Corsair wardrobe pack will get you a camouflage and the new outfit together at a little bit of a discount. Then we've got the choose your quadra pack. And if you're like, oh, is that going to be another one of these costume bundles where there's four of them? Because quadra, you're correct. That's what it is. 95, 20 pearls for that four premium outfit boxes. And then a bonus of a custom enhancement box level two. And speaking of enhancement, we have the awakening enhancement pack at 1890 pearls. This is 60 artisans and a bonus of 30 memory fragments, 150 stack, 20 pure magical blackstones and a custom enhancement box one. Now, if you're looking up by an artisans and you didn't catch last week's patch notes covering the pearl shop there is a daily deal that is 64 pearls and it gets you four artisans four valks cry four memory fragments and for something else that I'm forget, oh, four loot scrolls, the big one. Um, so if you weren't getting it already, I strongly recommend picking that up every single day. It goes for one more week that you can get it. The total amount for that, if you are able to pick it up every day for the two weeks, you're going to spend 896 pearls total, and you'll get 56 of each of those items. So 56 loot scrolls for 896 pearls, 56 artisans for 896 scrolls. The Valk's Cry, obviously a little nice, and 56 memory fragments, 896 pearls total. Like I said, if you missed the one week, cut that in half. That's what you're going to be picking up, but it's still very worth it. Uh, probably the best deal I've ever seen on loot scrolls ever available. Granted, it is daily, so you do have to catch it each day to pick each one up. Moving on, we've got the custom buff box. It's 1650 pearls. 
And out of this box, you pick one of each section for it. Um, you get the Blessing, Comma, Silver, or Secret Book of Old Moon. Item Drop Scroll is probably the way to go unless you want the Life Skill Mastery ones there. Uh, and then another 7-day Book of Old Moon or Comma, Silver, or an Enhancement Help Kit Level 2. Clarence's Travel Bag, 16 slots, is available. Again, it's 2,600 pearls. Comes around every once in a while. So if you've been looking for it, now's your time. we got Backpack Bundles for 50 slots. This is Inventory. And then, of course, paired with that, we have Weight Increases, which that happens a lot more often anytime we see new characters that are released then we have some new beginning and new adventurer bundles um, for instance 50 percent off on a 15-day value pack the only available for new adventurers we've got storage maids on sale for it as well and tier 3 polar bear the uh, celestial horse calling horn is also the permanent version 50 percent off for new adventures as well blessing a commissal book of old moon and then another beginning this is going to be for returning adventures only they it's literally the same things they're just noted differently two different items in there then we have some silver items from black spirits daily gift for one million silver each day you're going to be able to pick up three cron stones uh pick your choice of dream horse material and then two superior whale tenant potions it's one million for each of those purchasable once per day uh, and then we're going to see on the weekends for 1 million, you're going to be able to pick up a little bundle that's got premium elixir box, life skill mastery increase scroll, mount XP scroll, and a Shikatu uh, mystery box as well. Only 1 million silver for that. And then we'll also on the weekends be able to get a bundle of cron stone times 50 for 1 million silver. Sales on category, we got the weight limit and inventories on sale. And the weekly outfit sale is the Kisleeve premium set for Sork at 2720 pearls. So if you're looking to pick up crons, that might be the one to go with so that is it for this week's patch notes and pearl shop let me know what you guys think about the stuff going on in the comments down below if you're new to the channel be sure to subscribe so you get notifications when new videos do go live and if you'd like to catch me live there's a link to my twitch page in the description down below you can jump on over there drop a follow so you get notifications for that as well with that said that's going to be it for this one I want to thank everybody for watching and i will see you next time hey.